My guest tonight won a Golden Globe and Emmy Award for her work on The Closer, and her new series, Call Your Mother, airs Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m. on ABC. Please welcome the lovely, the talented, I'm thrilled she's with us. She's one of my favorites, Kira Sedgwick. Kira, I love seeing you. We're all separated during COVID, and then today I'm driving to work, and I'm like, I get my Kira time, so thank you. Oh my gosh, that's so nice. Yeah. It's been such a long time that I'm so happy to see you, even under these circumstances. Yeah, I know, this is nice. Where are you right now? That's a beautiful, it looks like I'm talking to you in, and you're in an art museum. It I looks- know, it's crazy. I'm really lucky, girl. I live in, in uh, I have a place in Los Angeles. Beautiful, okay. Yeah, this is, this is my place in Los Angeles. And yeah, I mean, I get to see the green. I mean, Jesus. It's nice. It's really nice. And, and you, I mean, all of us, we're all going through the same thing. We're at home or I get my big thing every day is I get to come to this abandoned theater and, and, and do the show. But other than that, I'm at home and yes. feeling kind of trapped. I understand you got out. You actually I, went out I, for an evening of fun. How do you do that right now? I did. Well, I got invited to go to this comedy show at Magic Castle. And so I went to Magic Castle. And it's, out, see- it's outdoors, right? It's outdoors, it's- yes. but you're in your car six feet apart and you tune in to a radio station. And I thought, this is horrible. This is going to be terrible. But then people came out and they were so funny and they were so amazing. And Sherry Shepard was there and also one of your writers. Oh, Lori. Lori Kilmartin. Yeah, Laurie Kilmartin, who killed it. Yes. Who was absolutely fantastic. And, you know, among all the other things that are incredibly weird about it, you know, these poor, first of all, it can't have been easy for these guys. I mean, it's got to be so weird. You're like literally looking out on a sea of cars. You can't really hear people. Right. But they give you these plastic clackers that are just like this you know, horrible like plastic nightmare that like you're gonna throw out right after you use it. Right. But you know And it makes a clapping sound so that a clapping sound. In fact (laughs) you're funny today. (laughs) You're funny tonight, I mean, because it's night. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Disregard the (laughs) the sun coming in. Exactly. That sounds weird. No, it's good. Believe me. I can imagine that if I were one of the comedians up there this is what I would want to hear. It's awful. But you know what? It's better than nothing. Yeah. And of course, I'm so codependent. I'm like, ah, ah, my arm's like killing me by the end of it. But you know. That's hard I, to do. Yeah, I would think. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've been talking to you for a long time over the years. And I've always loved it when you come on the program. And I realized that the question my producers and I think everybody always wants to ask you is the same question over and over again, and you must be getting sick of it, which is, you've been married, you and Kevin Bacon have been married for, you know, so many years. How do you keep your marriage happy? What's the secret? And I think, do you, do you just ban that question now from interviews? No, I don't, because, um, you know, I have a funny answer, and the, and the answer as does Kev. Kev's is, you keep the fights clean and the sex dirty. Oh. People like that one. Right. And mine is the secret to a happy marriage is not to take marital advice from um, celebrities. Yes. That's mine. Is yeah. to not 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 ask me that question because I don't have the but the true answer is, and I'm just gonna tell you right now, the secret to a happy marriage is not hanging out together 24 7, 365 days a year. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really like, you know. Absence make the heart makes the heart grow fonder, and like you know, when you're out in the world and bringing things back into a marriage, that is a good thing. As long as it's not a third person, unless you're into that stuff, which I am. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that later. I don't know if you guys have this, but like <clears throat> as we've been married, like our bed has gotten bigger. You know, like like we started out with a queen for like 20 years. We've been married 32 years. And like wow. 21 years into the marriage, Kev's like, I think we need a better bed, bigger bed. And I'm like, what? A bigger bed? You know, this just is the beginning of the end. I mean, I was like really freaked out by it. But then we got a bigger bed and I was like, oh, yeah, bigger bed. That's good. You know what you should try? This is something my wife wanted to try about two years ago. We got bunk beds. So I'm on the top. She's on the bottom. There's no physical contact. She doesn't want me touching her. Um, So it's the top bed and the bunk bed and then the utility closet during the day. And we have a very, that's how you keep a marriage going. 
That's the secret. Yeah, I don't know why bunk beds are just for kids. It's ridiculous. It's a way to keep it going. You know what's amazing is this is very different for us. I know that you had, you guys had kids early, and this is something that your new show is about, Call Your Mother, because you, I'm not at the empty nester stage yet. How old are your kids? My kids are, my daughter is 17, and no. uh, my son is uh, 15. So we're getting there, but I still can't even imagine it. Yeah. But I know that you had kids early, and so you've yeah. got, you, you're used to this idea of it's, things are quiet. Things are quiet, things are different, definitely, and it doesn't suck. I mean, I really- You should tell your kids that. Tell your kids, you know what I love? The part when you went away. <laughs> no, no, it sounds, it really is a horrifying moment when you're like, you're really leaving, wait, you're really leaving? Like, I birthed you and I raised you and now that I've done my job well, you wanna leave me, yeah. you know? But the truth is like, you really do want them to fly away and it's great. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like, you, look, I had kids so young. I didn't know anyone who had kids. I, I, I don't know, no one taught me how to do a lot of the things that like, I grew up in the 70s, you know, where like, Mothers didn't wake up in the morning and like make their kids breakfast. Like, I don't know how I got up. I don't know how I got dressed. I don't know how I got to school. I mean, I know I did like, but you know, I, I just. Your mother, then, your mother didn't, you felt like your mother didn't teach you the necessary things you needed to know. Here's the thing. I can't go into detail about this because she's definitely going to be watching tonight. I can okay. just tell you that right now. Suffice to say is like <clears throat> little things like <clears throat> when to go to the dentist and like, when to wash your hands, you know, after you use the loo and stuff like that. Like, she didn't tell you you have to wash your hands after you use the bathroom? Like I said, we're not going to go into detail about this. I think you just did. He just did. did. Just went into detail. But the thing is, is that when I was 23 and I had this baby, I was like, no one tells you how to do anything. Yeah. I was 23. Kev was 30. We didn't know anything. And also we sort of knew we knew every thought we knew everything. So like, <clears throat> we literally we brought this baby home. I didn't know how to change a diaper. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. But we went through that too. No one tells you any of this stuff. And no. And their I, legs are like this in the beginning. They're completely folded into each other. Don't you remember that? Or did you not do the, did you not? Did I, you not when my, stuff? every, each time my wife uh, gave birth, I left for a period of, uh, I think a year each time and stayed at a hotel. And then I came back when I was told the coast was clear. That was my way of doing it. And I, I think it was very, true. it's not true. But <laughs> I, I, know that's not true. I, I just, <laughs> trust me, I thought about it. I thought about maybe I could just go to a hotel for a year and then come back when, the, when my child is wearing like a little sailor suit and it's like, hello, father, nice <laughs> to see you. Come in, I brought you your slippers. I didn't even know how to like, I didn't need to know. I, there was a time when, <clears throat> my son, my first kid, he started to, you know, get up out of the crib, you know, at like a very young age, like maybe a year into it, which is something that parents experience, I've since found out. But like, I didn't know that this was sort of, it didn't right. mean that you were supposed to put them in a big boy bed, which is what I thought. I was like, oh, well, he, we were like, oh, well, he's one and it's time to be in a big boy bed. And we put him in a big boy bed, like a real bed. And we would go downstairs and we'd be watching TV and we'd hear this giant thump oh from upstairs. <laughs> and we'd go up the stairs and Travis had fallen out of the bed. Sure. And we were like, oh, well, pick him up, put him back in the bed. You know, didn't even think twice about it. I was like, oh, well, this is what happens, right? Like people, the kids fall out of bed. So it wasn't until my stepmother came over one day and said, I said, look, Travis in a big boy bed. She goes, you don't have bumpers? on the bed, which is like what you do in yes. between the the crib and the big boy bed you put in these. I was like, oh, yeah. why he keeps falling out of You know bed. what else works is duct tape. <laughs> duct tape holds the baby right there. You know, I'm curious about something. You're doing this show now, Call Your Mother, and uh, one of the things that's so great about doing a multi-camera show, sitcom, is you have an audience there and they give you that rush of energy and you walk in and they're thrilled to see you. And oh that's what, even when you're watching those shows, the energy of the audience is what helps so much. And I know that you guys are making this show 
and a, a very funny comedy, but you have to rely on your own instincts. You can't have an audience. You have to rely on your own instincts, but you also have to rely on like, well, first of all, yes, you definitely have to rely on your own instincts, which may or may not be good. But uh, but also you have to like rely on your own ego to like get you through the day, right? I mean, are yeah. you experiencing this? It's like- Oh yeah. yeah, I have such a big ego and you're right. It's your ego that gets you through. I hear huge laughs in my mind. Uh, wow. Now, they probably wouldn't exist in real life if there was an audience here. But as long as my delusion is what's keeping me going, that's really what's keeping me going. Yeah. Give me some of that delusion. I've got I've I, got plenty left over. Bring it on. <laughs> bring it on, buddy, because I spend a lot of time going like, you suck. <laughs> well, you... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you have to worry about that. Uh, congratulations on the show. Call Your Mother airs Wednesdays at 9.30 on ABC. And doesn't it feel good to be making something, though? I know there's no oh audience, God. but you're, you're, you're there. You're making something. You're making something funny with people that you like. And that's the blessing. To me, it that's the blessing. It is a blessing. It is such a blessing. We're really lucky to be able to do it and to be able to, like, employ people. So, Well, what I'd like you to do is sometime soon... Once we all get vaccinated, once I get my shot, you get your shot, bring the clacker. Oh and gosh. I want you to do next time. <laughs> I need just a little of that. I just need a little of that in my life. And if you're doing it, just you with all the cardboard cutouts, I'll be thrilled. Okay, good. I'll, I'm happy to do it, really. Happy to support. Thank you so much. What you, yeah, I know oh. we both know that's never happening, but thank you for saying it would. Uh, hey, thank you so much for talking to me, Kira. I love discussing things with you. You've always, you're always a great guest, and um, I'm happy for you. Thank you. Take good care. So good to see you. Good to see you. Now here, have a giant glass of water. Yeah, here it comes. <laughs>